morning, YouTube. Happy Tuesday. It's going to rain again in Tennessee. <laughs> I'm so sick of using that line. Lord have mercy. Yeah, it's, uh, so it's Tuesday, and I'm sorry, I look really, I look really tired, um, because I am. I'm, like, a bit sleep deprived, um, and, and definitely, definitely tired, definitely. I have seven, seven neonates right now. Seven. I will say everyone is doing well. Um, at this point. So that's a good thing. We don't have any sick ones. Uh, the gem babies are getting over their bacterial infection. Uh, they're still on Albon, but everybody's eating. Um, diarrhea is almost gone. We still have some smelly poo, but you know, it takes about 14 days for that Albon to do what it's supposed to do. So, you know, they're eating well. And then we ended up getting three more Say what is it? Friday, Friday. I think. Yeah, we got three more. Friday. I got a call Thursday. Um, I think I told you guys about this. Um, sweet little lady here locally um, is feeding strays, and she got overrun with uh, just you know kitten overload. It happens. It does. God bless her. It happens. And Dixie's helping her get that situation under control. Uh, but she had a young mother that had babies and she just wasn't going to take care of the babies. I went out Thursday uh, to check on them, said, you know, look, they look good, give her a chance. By the next day, she was moving them all over the place. Um, she had passed and so they called me and asked me to come get them, which I did. Uh, that is the noble babies, hashtag noble. So we have Baron, Duchess, and Marquise. Baron is the ginger. Uh, he is the tiniest. He was 88 grams when I got him. He's turning into a fat little monkey now. They've, they've ate well since I've had them. We've actually made it past the honeymoon phase. Almost afraid to say that out loud. Yeah. But they're all eating good. Marquise is the biggest one. She is the gray tabby. And then we have a short-haired parlor panther, which is Duchess. And she's very sweet, too. Uh, Marquise is the biggest. They've all been good eaters. I really haven't had any issue with them at all, but we did have to move the gem babies out of the NIC unit because I only have one. Um, and we had to put them into the, uh, oh, what do you want to call it? It's, it's my carrier that I used before I put them into the Chateau Deep because they don't need that much room yet. Um, I still need them to stay a little bit warmer and kind of stay cuddled a little bit. Um, so it's their uh, transition. It's the transition um, case that I use before we put them into the Chateau Beef. Uh, but it was unfortunately uh, more ne necessary. I have to think of my words this morning. I haven't had any coffee, y'all. Y'all forgive me. Whew. Bless me. I need it today. Um, it was more important for the nobles to be in the NIC unit because they were only about five days old when I got them. So we're right at a week. Uh, Sunday was a week. You know, Sunday's my fun day. Everybody has a birthday on Sunday. That's just the way, that's just the way my world works. Uh, so they were a week old Sunday. Everybody's gaining weight nicely. Everyone's eating well. We're doing fine. So on that front, I have, at this point, healthy kittens. Um, and I'm really happy to have healthy kittens because healthy kittens are really easy to take care of. Just saying. You feed them, you potty them, you love them, you put them back to bed. Um, we, we are still doing a lot of baths because for whatever reason, Miss Pearl likes to pee on herself a lot. Like, I potty her and she still pees on herself. That child had another butt bath last night. Uh, and she hates it. She absolutely hates the bath. She hates the blow dryer. I'm like, girl, you need to quit peeing on yourself. I cannot have stinky babies. I don't allow it. Nope. We're not doing it. Can't. Mm -mm. Nope. So, babies are all doing really, really, really well. So, it is Tuesday, April the 28th. We're going to give you a date. And the reason I'm going to give you a date is Tennessee is finally starting to open up again starting 
you know, we got this phase thing that we're doing to just, you know, slow down the economy. But Tennessee has opened up restaurants as of yesterday at 50% capacity. Retail gets to open up Wednesday also at 50% capacity. I have no idea when they're going to let the hair salons and barbers go back to work. I've heard it's going to be another 15 days, which is just insane because those people matter and they need to go back to work. They do, you know, if people are too scared, they won't come in and see them, right? It's just, what's the difference? Everybody's at Walmart. Everybody's at Lowe's. What's the difference? There is no difference except for Walmart and Lowe's and Home Depot and the mattress stores. They're all out there making a killing while the rest of us people are stuck at home because we're not essential. Liquor stores, tax revenue. Can y'all say tax revenue? Yeah. That's what I think. In any event, it, it, you know, it's, it is my personal opinion that at the end of the day, it always comes down to the almighty tax dollar as far as the government's concerned. They'll use the term uh, for public safety. Y'all ever, ever see that movie Day and Night with Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz? I love that movie. One of the best movies. I can watch that movie all the time. I love Tom Cruise when he does serious comedy. He's just really good at it. There is a line that he uses in this movie um, when he's trying to, I don't remember what it was, save Cameron Diaz from something, I don't, I don't remember exactly what it was, but he basically told her, whenever the government tells you that they're going to, to take you to a safe and secure place, we want you to be safe and secure, that's code for they're gonna kill you. That has always stuck with me. So anytime they use those words, safe or secure, I go, mm. you know, I don't trust them and I don't trust them. So what did the prince and I do last night? We did our civic duty. We went out to dinner. We sure did. We went to Old Charlie's, which was probably one of the only restaurants that actually had their dining room open. Um, and we supported our local businesses and our local workers because those poor kids in there hadn't been working, right? Those servers weren't making any money. It's funny though, let me tell you, this is a funny story. We get there, so they've got a tent outside, right? And everybody's, you know, masks and gloves and, and you know, she kind of came out to the tent and we got out of the car and said, hey, you know, is the dining room open? And she goes, yeah, how many do you have? And I said, two, and she goes, yeah, go ahead, come on. So we're standing quite, quite far away from each other and she goes, um, so I need to ask you three questions to which I replied, I've killed three walkers. She didn't laugh at all. I thought it was hilarious for any of you Walking Dead fans. So if I go in any place from now on and they say we have three questions, I'm just going to blurt out, you know, I've killed more walkers than, you know, than I can remember. I've killed three people because they were trying to kill me first. Those are going to be my three answers. That, that's just going to be standard, and we'll see what goes from there. There you go. Uh, yeah, but the questions were, uh, have you been exposed to anybody with COVID-19? Why anybody would tell you yes. I'm just saying, it, that's the truth. You know, uh, have you been running a fever, and I don't know if you had any symptoms, I think it was stuff like that. I'm like, no. And then, so they squirt our hands with hand sanitizer that smelled like rotten peanuts, which was disgusting. I'm, I'm just going to say, I had to get in there and pull out my handy dandy hand sanitizer because I always have some uh, from Bath and Body Works that smelled like Christmas, so our hands smelled better. Uh, but it was nice, you know, it was, it was very empty. Um, the owner came by and, 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 uh, and, and talked to us, and she's a very nice lady. Uh, they've been really stressed out. They've been on a skeleton crew. She's worried about her, her employees. She's worried about her business. Rightly so, right? So that's kind of what's going on right now. You know, I think it just, they need to open back up and people need to assess their own risk. You know, I, I've said it before. If you are high risk, then you need to take extra precautions and your family needs to take extra precautions, um, you know, to keep you well. 
I mean, that's all, that's all I know to say. You cannot ask the masses to suffer for a few. You just can't do it, which is exactly what they've done. Everyone is going to suffer equally for fear that we might lose a few people. I mean, we lose people to flu, we lose people to heart attacks, we lose people to pneumonia, we lose people to cancer, you know, we lose people to all kinds of things. We lose people to things that are contagious on a daily basis. We lose more human beings to abortion every day. But we don't shut down our country for it, you know, and then continue to keep it shut down. Knoxville, oh my God, Knoxville, shoo, I feel sorry for y'all, oh feel so sorry for y'all. I mean, they're not going to have everything open. You know, theirs is, every phase is 28 days. 28 days. It's going to be July before these, these, these people are open. I mean, how do they expect people to survive and pay their bills and pay their mortgages and feed their kids? And like, I don't get it. I really just, I don't get it. I was trying not to rant today, but I don't get it. I really don't. You know, I have a lot of friends that are in, you know, the hairstyling business. None of them are working. It's not right. I'm sorry. It's just not right. But the mattress store in town is open. It's been open the whole time. Because, you know, that's essential. Ugh. Makes me mad. There's just a lot of people suffering needlessly. You know, I'm, I'm still going to sit here and say that the response to this was way out, like way, way too far, way too far. They didn't get enough information. They started going off the deep end. When they did get the information, they started ignoring it that, oh, well, this isn't as bad as we thought it was. Maybe we can calm down a little bit. No, they just come back and go, oh, it's because everything we've done has saved you. No one has it. Everything we've done, you know, keep yourself clean, wash your hands. It's still beyond me that washing hands seems to be new. That, that should scare you guys more than the damn virus does. I'm just saying that people are just now coming around to the thing about wash your hands. Anyway, I'm about to pull into the studio, so I'll cut the video here. We'll come back on our way home. I want to do yard work, but it looks like it's going to rain today. So I guess there's another day I don't get to do the back. My back looks like hell, you guys. I'm going to do a before and after just to show you how bad it looks. I ain't lying. It's awful. I've never not had my waterfall running by now. My solar guys are back. The two panels that they're waiting on didn't come in. So they'll have to come back for that. Um... So all the panels are up at two. Still don't have the foil insulation in. Uh, I think they're gonna, they came, they came back this morning. I let them in and they're gonna finish doing uh, wiring up stuff, I think, and have that done where all they've gotta do is just plug in the rest of the panels so, um, so that it's done. So we're on our way with that. All right, so I'm gonna cut it here. I'll be back in a few. All right, we're back. Just leaving the studios. It's been raining some, although I see some clear skies, so we'll see. I don't know exactly what is on the agenda for today. Uh, like I said, I know the solar guys are there. They're going to be working on some stuff. If it dries up, maybe I can get to the back. I might take some shots of that. Maybe start getting ready to record <laughs> the before snap for that. Y'all don't judge me, though, if I do that, okay? Because I'm telling you, it really is. It's it's that bad. It is that bad. So again, I'm not sure. We're probably going to work on the car some. I think we're going to work on the um, the hood. We've gotten that off. I think I'm going to do some Bondo work on that today. Probably if it stops raining. If it doesn't rain anymore, because that's got to be out. I think we're going to take the car, back it out, turn it around, back it in. Um, definitely work, our, work on the hood. We might do the front suspension, start it. I don't know yet. Uh, we'll see. I have no idea. I don't know. It's going to be those things. Definitely like to get the deposit done today, so that leaves tomorrow wide open for me, uh, where I can get done maybe some more stuff. 
I don't know. They've leveled that off over there that looks so weird with that building gone. I'm wondering if they're planning on building something else there or if they're just going to leave it. We'll see. Um, you know, traffic still is, is pretty, pretty slow in Cleveland. Uh, even though some things have opened up as of yesterday, uh, the traffic is still pretty minor. Uh, it is definitely not back to usual for sure. <clears throat> My, uh, co-host Adam said they had to go down, uh, through Atlanta, uh, earlier in the week for a family member's funeral. And he said it was like, he's never drove through downtown Atlanta like that. It was like a ghost town. He said it was like a scene out of The Walking Dead. There was like no traffic, uh, which will probably be the only time in his lifetime that he ever sees that. Uh, he should have recorded it because it just, you know, in Cleveland's the same way. We have a lot of traffic in Cleveland. Uh, for us to be a big little town, uh, we just, we have a lot of traffic here and the traffic has been pretty slow, uh, still even now. The main crossroad coming out of my home, uh, which is Paul Huff, is just insanely congested. And uh, it's not been. It still isn't. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, even though restaurants were able to open up on the inside, not all of them have, I'll tell you that. Uh, some are open and letting you walk inside. Others are still only doing drive through and curb curbside service. You know, I guess that's up to, as long as it's up to each individual on what they want to do and not mandated for them to do, I'm okay with that. You know, if that's your decision to do with your business as you please, I'm absolutely okay with that. Market will handle itself. I just have an issue with the government coming in and telling people who can work, when they can work, how they can work. Um, you know, and again, as, as we said on the show today, moving the goalpost, which is what's been, what's been going on, um, from, from day one, you know, first it was the data came in and, you know, we had to, you know, worry about all these people that were going to die and we needed to flatten the curve. And then, you know, when those, those numbers were not accurate, um, you know, then it was like, well, we need to lessen the amount of, uh, infection rate. And when that number went down, then it was, well, we need to lessen the amount of deaths. I mean, they just keep moving and keep moving and keep moving because none of the stuff they said that was going to happen happened, which they should be glad that none of the stuff they said was going to happen happened. Like, that's a good thing. Uh, but they're never going to admit being wrong. I mean, that is just the way political works. It's just the way that it is. Um, you know, so now we're dealing with moving of the goalpost and, uh, you know, people kind of laying down for that too, which upsets me to no end. But, uh, all right. So, you know, this is probably, um, we're about at the 15 minute mark. I think we were close to 10 minutes on the way going in. So we'll try to keep it short and sweet. You guys know the rules till I see you next time. You stay safe, stay clean and have a perfect day. Bye.